Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure for me to be with you here uh, these last a couple of days, but um, I was serving with the IMB in, in Africa in the 90s. And uh, the IMB did a study of unreached people groups, and they came along and discovered that uh, the French Canadians, uh, the Quebecois, were one of the most unreached people groups of the world. And so I got this email asking me if I would consider to transfer from sub saharan Africa to uh, Montreal to do student evangelism and, and plant a church. And I thought well, that was a crazy idea to go from sub saharan to the cold of Canada. And so I, I really didn't even consider the request. I printed it, I put it on my desk. And a few months later, I was cleaning up my desk and I came across that email. And as I reread it, God right then called me to go to Montreal. And so I headed to Montreal with a clear sense of call. And when I got there, a city of three and a half million people, uh, 250,000 university and college students, four major campuses. I didn't know a soul in Montreal. And uh, much less, I had no church planting training. Uh, all I knew was that I was called to collegiate evangelism and that the IMB wanted me to plant a student church there. And so I felt a lot like Nehemiah. And uh, I went and studied Nehemiah, and, and I really learned a little bit from him. And, and I just started going across the campus praying. Nehemiah, before he ever did anything, the first thing he did was, was uh, go before the Lord and fast and pray. And so I would walk across those campuses praying. And one of my prayers was that God would send me leaders and that would, God would really show me what to do. Honestly, I had no idea what I would do, whether it would be a church plant or a campus ministry. And within just a few days, uh, first of all, uh, Nam sent a semester missionary, Ruth Blackaby, out of the Blackaby family that came to, to help. And then I got a phone call from Athletes in Action. Athletes in Action wanted to start ministry in, in uh, Montreal, and they had two young graduates, college graduates, that wanted to come. And uh, the guy at the other end of the phone, he said, Robert, I have no idea if you, if you like sports, but we need somebody to help our two uh, staff members, and we, we need somebody to kind of supervise them. Well, I had been a university soccer player, had used sports in, in Africa, and so it was an immediate answer to my prayer. And then God brought a young man from Kansas and a girl from Quebec, and within a few weeks we had a team of seven that were praying to reach the college students. And um, I thought that I would spend a year or two researching what students are like, what Quebec is like, and what their... Um, cultures like, you know, I was starting to read all the church planning books and, and I knew I needed to know my people. I knew I needed to get some training. And so in my idea, I was going to plant a church in about two years. And we started September of that first year, 2000, uh, with a campus ministry trying to reach the athletes. One of the first ones that came was the uh, quarterback of the McGill University football team. And by him coming that first night, we had five and then the next uh, few weeks, within two or three weeks, we had 25 athletes coming. And some of those got saved right away. And so they'd say, what do we do now? And, I, and we said, well, we're going to start discipling you, but you need to go find a church. And less than a week or two later, they, say, they came back to our weekly meeting and they said, we've tried that. We don't like any of the churches here. And right then, um, God just put it deep in my heart and said, the time is now. I was unprepared, I uh, didn't know what I was doing, but we started a church in October of 2000, started with 30 people, and God really blessed that work, and within, uh, by the beginning of the next year, we had over 100 students coming to that student church in downtown Montreal. But at first glance, when you think of a, a student, a collegiate church, I mean, the, the task just seems daunting. Um, how it, will it sustain itself financially? We've talked about that. What about the theological aspect of a healthy church? What about the logistics and responsibilities involved? And what about keeping unity in, in, in the body of believers? And so when you look at this whole idea that we're working with, you, th you realize it's, it can only be a God task. And uh, this morning we want to look at this whole question, the monogenerational church. How do we handle a single generation body theologically and practically? I think one of the number one questions I, I always get 
is, is a student church really a church? And there's, we have a lot of critics, and I think we, we all know that. But Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says this, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. There's so many examples in the Bible. Look at the Old Testament of how God uses young people. David, as he was a young man, and God rose him up to leadership. You see Joseph in the Old Testament. You see Joshua and Jonathan. You see Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the list goes on and on. And even in the New Testament, we see Timothy and others that, that are young adults that have risen up to spiritual leadership. And even in our modern day, we can look back at the student volunteer movement. We can look at journeymen and hands-on and all kind of things that show us, and we know this, that God uses young adults to do extraordinary things. You know, campus ministers have known this for a long time. And how many campus ministers in the last 30, 40 years just wished they could start a collegiate church? And yet, at, at one time, at least when I started collegiate ministry, we felt like our hands were, were handcuffed, that we couldn't do that because of the, the system. But I think those days are gone. And these are exciting days where a collegiate minister or people with a heart for students can start a collegiate church. And yet that same question is still out there. Is a student church really a church? The critics are still there. And so this morning around your tables, I encourage you to talk about this question. How do we handle this generation of students theologically and practically? There's a few ideas that I just want to bring out, and I know you're going to have a, a, a lot more to add to it. There are some handouts on your table, just in case you want to take notes there and, and take it home. But uh, I have three challenges in the theological area. What about the challenge of bringing students together from many different theological backgrounds? Some of you are from uh, pioneer areas, what uh, Lifeway calls the emerging regions. And uh, there's not many Southern Baptist churches at all in your area. And so as you gather students together, many times you, you gather uh, believers together. But they come from all sides of the theological spectrum. And so it's definitely a challenge. Um, and there's many approaches to take. I know that the approach that I've taken as we've gathered these together is that we've agreed to agree on the essentials of the gospel. And sometimes we've agreed to disagree on the non-essentials. And I feel like in a postmodern world, if we make non-essentials a test for fellowship or not, we're going to create some barriers. And so you guys can talk through that issue. Um, I also feel like our job is to discover where the students are theologically and maybe bring them up to where they, they need to be. One of my platforms on the university campus in Quebec is as a soccer coach. I'm a, the assistant soccer coach for our university. And as a soccer coach, when I have uh, freshman players come in, I see where they're at as far as their playing skills, and then I see where they need to be at the university level. And I see it as my job to take them from where they're at to where they need to be. And to me, it's like a, a, a staircase that I take them up one step at a time. It's the same thing as a collegiate church planter. We, bring, we have all these students that are at different levels, but we know that we need to bring them up to where they need to be founded in Christ. So that's one of the challenges that you can talk about around your table. But what about the challenge of putting students into leadership roles um, before maybe they are spiritually ready? I think we all need leaders. We're all uh, at times starved for leaders. And yet sometimes we can make the mistake of putting a leader in a, a student in a leadership role before he's spiritually ready, before he's mature. I tell you, I've, I've learned the, the lesson the hard way. Um, those that know me can attest to that, that uh, sometimes I, I've made the mistake of putting a student in a leadership role before they're ready. But the one thing that I do want to mention that has really helped me in the last few years is pay attention to red flags. Pay attention to something that just stands out to you, that does, just does not look right in the student's life. Pay attention to red flags. And um, the fact that I overlooked red flags in the past cost me dearly. But one of the things that uh, we did at Impact Church in Montreal is that we set up 
a small group uh, of uh, pastoral teams, so to speak, of just three or four people, maybe the, the most mature in the church, and then some others that were eager to lead as, um, but um, more as a ministry team. So in a sense, we had like a small group of elders, and then the others were ministry uh, team uh, members, and they didn't have as much responsibility. Then uh, a third thing that we can look at uh, as far as theologically, well, what about the biblical model to have elders? Can you have elders if everyone is under 25 years old? Maybe you can talk about that uh, and look at the qualifications for an elder in Titus 1, 5, and 9. But then there's the practical challenge. Um, I've listed uh, three as well. Oh, one that really uh, was real for me was what about the denominational challenge? I think all of us as collegiate ministers, we are interested in the kingdom of Christ and we want to build kingdom cr Christians. But at the same time, we're also Southern Baptist. And we want these students that come from various walks of life, especially in the Northwest, the Northeast, and in Canada, that really don't have a Southern Baptist background. So how do we bring them along to, for them to buy into the, the vision of like the IMB and other things? And I think God really, um, I kind of just fell upon this without really having much thought to it, but God really engineered this and the fact that I was able to take some students to Collegiate Week, then I was able to take students to Beach Reach and on mission trips with the IMB. And as they rubbed shoulders with IMB, with Southern Baptists, and heard the vision and heard the passion for reaching people for Christ, they bought into that vision and, and they become very committed to helping the denomination because we know that in our postmodern world, denomination to start with is, is sometimes a bad word. And yet, what is denomination? It's an attempt to come together for the kingdom of Christ to reach more people. That's really what it is. Then the, the second challenge is the transitional challenge. And that's, you know, we, we all live with that, with the fact that students are always graduating and moving on. And without going into great detail, maybe you can really talk through that issue of um, how to sustain your church, how to, uh, in a sense, keep those that are graduating and have them plant their lives into that church at, at, while at the same time continue to reach students. Some student churches transition in such a way that they totally lose their focus at reaching students. So you can talk through that. And finally, the financial challenge. We've, we dealt with that yesterday, but maybe it's worth revisiting. You know, it's a, it's a, a real and ever-present challenge to collegiate church plans. And so talk through those issues, bring others up, and uh, let's see how God leads us in uh, this whole idea of dealing with a single generation body theologically and practically.